Sometimes it's essential to say no to preserve our own self-worth and integrity. In an ideal world, forgiveness and redemption would be universally available. However, reality shows us that some actions and behaviors cause such deep wounds that offering a second chance might not only fail to heal, but could also lead to more suffering. In this discussion, we'll explore the boundaries of forgiveness and the importance of safeguarding our emotional and physical health. We'll guide you on how to maintain awareness and caution, identifying when it's wiser to move forward with the lessons learned rather than reopening the door to potential pain. While we should strive for compassion and understanding, it's also crucial to recognize the reality of someone's actions and their consequences. Stoicism teaches us to see beyond our hopes and desires, viewing situations as they truly are. Offering a second chance implies hope and faith in someone's ability to change. However, the Stoics remind us to base our decisions on reason and objective reality, not on unfounded optimism. This involves evaluating if someone's past behavior shows a pattern unlikely to change and considering if giving a second chance could harm us or continue negative cycles. In this video, we will cover 12 essential points to consider before deciding to give someone a second chance. Stay attentive as each topic discussed here is crucial. Focus until the end, and if you find this content valuable, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps us a lot and costs you nothing. Let's go. Number one, people rarely change. Altering deeply ingrained behaviors or character traits requires more than just acknowledgement and the will to change. It demands sustained effort and often professional support. This transformation process is complex, challenging, and above all, rare. People frequently revert to familiar patterns, not by deliberate choice, but because these patterns are comfortable, even if they are harmful to themselves or others. Moreover, change necessitates a conducive environment and a robust support system. Without these critical elements, even the most determined individuals may struggle to make significant progress. This doesn't mean change is impossible, but the likelihood of drastic character or behavior transformations, especially without intrinsic motivation and adequate external support, is low. Offering a second chance in the hope of change can, therefore, be a risky gamble. Depending on the severity of someone's actions or behavior, one might be unwittingly exposing oneself to repeated risks without a realistic likelihood of improvement. In cases of abuse, deep betrayal or other harmful actions, the hope for change might reflect the giver's desire more than a tangible possibility based on the person in question. Recognizing that people rarely change is not an excuse to give up on everyone at the first sign of imperfection. Instead, it's an invitation to realistically assess situations and protect one's emotional and physical well-being. It means understanding that while support and encouragement are valuable, the responsibility for change ultimately lies with the person who needs to change. This realization can be liberating, allowing one to move forward with clarity and purpose, focusing on relationships and situations that promote mutual growth and respect. Number two, never compromise your values. When deciding whether to grant someone a second chance, it is crucial to examine how this decision aligns with our core principles. One of the key teachings, particularly from Stoic philosophy, is the paramount importance of never compromising our values, regardless of the circumstances. Virtue and integrity are supreme goods that should be upheld above all else. Therefore, we must live in accordance with our rational and virtuous nature, ensuring our actions and decisions harmonize with our ethical and moral standards. Before considering giving someone a second chance, we must evaluate whether this decision aligns with our core values or if it would lead us to compromise them. Compromising our values for someone who has shown they are undeserving of a second chance 
not only diverts us from the path of virtue, but can also result in a cycle of disappointments and grievances. By disregarding the person's past actions and the lessons they impart, we risk perpetuating harmful behaviors to the detriment of our own integrity and well-being. Furthermore, by steadfastly upholding our values, we establish clear boundaries that protect and guide our interactions. This does not mean we should be rigid or devoid of compassion, but rather that our compassion and willingness to forgive should not lead us to accept behaviors that contradict our deepest principles. True wisdom lies in the ability to discern when compassion and a second chance serve the greater good, and when they simply expose us to further harm. Number three, some people do not know how to repent. Regret, a profound emotion, signifies the acknowledgement of faults and the willingness to change, which are crucial for healing and reconciliation. When someone shows no capacity or willingness to sincerely repent, it indicates a significant lack of self-awareness and a commitment to change, fundamental elements for any form of growth or personal development. Genuine regret transcends a mere apology. It requires a deep comprehension of the impact of one's actions on others, coupled with tangible efforts to enact significant behavioral changes. Without this level of understanding, an apology becomes an empty, repetitive gesture, ultimately meaningless, leading to a cycle of harmful behaviors without genuine intention to improve. A person's refusal or inability to repent can stem from various factors, such as pride, selfishness, or even deeper personality traits like narcissism or a lack of empathy. These traits make it extremely difficult, if not impossible, for the person to recognize their mistakes and take responsibility for them. In such scenarios, granting a second chance may not only fail to address the underlying issues, but also validate destructive behaviors, allowing them to persist without consequences. In these cases, extending forgiveness and offering another opportunity can inadvertently reinforce negative patterns, making it clear that the individual is not held accountable for their actions. This realization underscores the importance of discernment in deciding when to give a second chance and when to recognize that some individuals simply do not possess the capacity for genuine repentance and change. Number four, forgiveness is not reconciliation. Forgiveness is an internal act of liberation, a personal decision to release the burden of resentment or hurt towards someone who has wronged us. It does not require the other person to change, apologize, or even be aware that they have been forgiven. Forgiveness is a gift we give ourselves, a step towards achieving inner peace and emotional well-being. In contrast, reconciliation is a bilateral process that involves restoring a damaged relationship. It necessitates effort, understanding, and change from both parties involved. Genuine reconciliation requires mutual commitment to change, understanding, and respect for each other's needs and boundaries. It is a path that demands rebuilt trust and often involves agreeing on new ways of interacting in the future. It is crucial to distinguish between forgiving and reconciling. Forgiveness can be granted without needing to reintegrate the person into your life. There are situations where, despite forgiveness, reconciliation is not advisable or even possible, especially if the other party continues to exhibit harmful, abusive, or treacherous behaviors. In such cases, maintaining distance is a form of self-protection and a respect for one's boundaries. Choosing not to reconcile does not signify a failure to forgive. It means recognizing that some relationships are unhealthy or irreparably damaged, and that the best way to move forward is without the constant presence of the person who caused the harm. This decision honors one's well-being and emotional health, creating a safe space for healing and personal growth. Five. 
chronic problems rarely disappear. Experience and observation unveil an uncomfortable truth. Deeply entrenched problems in a person's personality or behavioral patterns seldom vanish without significant intervention. These chronic issues can manifest as an inability to keep commitments, manipulative or abusive behaviors, and problems with reliability and mutual respect. They often stem from deeper patterns rooted in past experiences, traumas, or an inability to acknowledge and work on one's own flaws. In this context, the recurrence of harmful behaviors is not just possible, but likely, especially without recognition, genuine will, and sustained effort to change. Opting not to give a second chance in these circumstances is not a denial of faith in people's ability to change. Rather, it is a pragmatic acknowledgement that change is often a difficult and slow process. It requires not only awareness and the desire to change from the person in question, but also a continuous commitment to overcome these chronic patterns. Without these crucial elements, the probability that the same problems will resurface in a relationship is high, potentially leading to further pain and disappointment. Therefore, recognizing the persistence of chronic issues is essential for making informed decisions about second chances, prioritizing one's emotional and psychological well-being. 6. Say no whenever necessary. This principle is rooted in the understanding that while forgiveness can be crucial for personal growth and healing, it does not necessitate reconciliation or the reintegration of a harmful individual into your life. Saying no acknowledges that you prioritize your peace, emotional safety, and well-being over the need to please others or conform to societal expectations of offering second chances. Saying no whenever necessary requires an honest evaluation of the situations and behaviors that led to the need for a second chance in the first place. If the person in question has not demonstrated genuine signs of change, an understanding of the impact of their actions, or a real effort to repair the damage caused, then saying no is a justified and appropriate response. Moreover, this stance protects you from the potential of being repeatedly harmed or exploited. Behavior patterns, especially those that are toxic or abusive, rarely change without a significant commitment to personal development and change. By saying no, you establish a clear boundary that communicates your refusal to tolerate such behavior and reinforces your dignity and self-esteem. 7. Personality is intrinsic to the person. A person's personality is shaped by a blend of genetic factors, life experiences, and social interactions, making it relatively stable over time. This stability does not imply that people cannot change, they can and often do. However, profound and lasting changes in personality demand conscious effort, introspection, and frequently professional assistance. When evaluating whether someone deserves a second chance, especially in cases involving transgressions or harmful behaviors, it is vital to consider the nature of that person's personality. If the negative behaviors are manifestations of deeply rooted personality traits, such as manipulative tendencies, selfishness, or a lack of empathy, the likelihood of change without significant commitment to personal development is low. This recognition should not be seen as an excuse for fatalism or prematurely giving up on people. Instead, it serves as an invitation to realistically assess a person's capacity for change and to protect oneself against unrealistic expectations. Expecting someone to alter fundamental aspects of their personality without genuine effort on their part can lead to cycles of disappointment and pain. Moreover, Acknowledging personality as intrinsic does not negate a person's capacity for growth or evolution. People can and should strive for self-improvement. However, this process is often long, challenging and non-linear. 
In situations where granting a second chance entails significant risks to one's emotional, physical or psychological well-being, understanding the intrinsic nature of personality can provide valuable guidance in making informed decisions. 8. Remember the lessons from the past. Granting a second chance without seriously considering someone's past actions can be an act of hope, but also a neglect of the valuable lessons learned. Forgiveness is a virtue, but it should not be confused with forgetting or willfully ignoring warning signs. It is crucial to evaluate whether the individual has shown genuine remorse and understanding of the consequences of their actions and tangible efforts to change. Past experiences teach us important lessons about boundaries, self-respect, and the importance of maintaining healthy relationships. When someone repeatedly disregards these principles, it may be wiser to protect yourself rather than setting yourself up for further disappointment. This approach does not mean closing the door to forgiveness or the possibility of reconciliation in the future, but recognizes that trust must be rebuilt through actions, not merely promises. Acting on impulse can cause us to overlook red flags and previous negative behavior patterns, increasing the risk of getting hurt again. Rather than succumbing to the immediate desire for reconciliation or the fear of loneliness, it is vital to take a moment to reflect on why the relationship was harmful in the past and whether those issues have been adequately addressed. Additionally, it is crucial to distinguish between forgiveness and reconciliation. You can forgive someone and release yourself from the burden of resentment without necessarily allowing that person to resume their previous role in your life. Maintaining your decision requires a clear understanding of your boundaries and the importance you place on your peace and well-being. Therefore, when faced with the question of whether to give a second chance, it is wise to take a step back and assess the situation with a clear mind and a calm heart. Allow yourself the time to consider all the implications and remember that sometimes the strongest and healthiest decision is to keep doors closed for good reasons. Cultivating the strength to resist momentary impulses in favor of what is healthy and beneficial in the long term is a sign of emotional maturity and self-respect. 9. Do not be a slave to your impulses. Acting on impulse can cause us to overlook red flags and previous negative behavior patterns, increasing the risk of getting hurt again. Rather than succumbing to the immediate desire for reconciliation or the fear of loneliness, it is vital to take a moment to reflect on why the relationship was harmful in the past and whether those issues have been adequately addressed. Additionally, it is crucial to distinguish between forgiveness and reconciliation. You can forgive someone and release yourself from the burden of resentment without necessarily allowing that person to resume their previous role in your life. Maintaining your decision requires a clear understanding of your boundaries and the importance you place on your peace and well-being. Therefore, when faced with the question of whether to give a second chance, it is wise to take a step back and assess the situation with a clear mind and a calm heart. Allow yourself the time to consider all the implications and remember that sometimes the strongest and healthiest decision is to keep doors closed for good reasons. Cultivating the strength to resist momentary impulses in favor of what is healthy and beneficial in the long term is a sign of emotional maturity and self-respect. 10. Nothing is ever guaranteed. Uncertainty is a constant in life, and this truth particularly applies to human relationships and the notion of granting second chances. The expectation that things will change for the better or that a second opportunity will ensure a different outcome is often unfounded. Accepting that nothing is ever guaranteed is crucial when contemplating whether someone deserves another chance in any capacity. This understanding forces us to face the reality that, regardless of promises made or hopes nurtured, 
there are no certainties that past behavior patterns will not repeat. People may promise to change and even make significant efforts toward that goal, but the possibility of relapsing into old habits or harmful actions always remains. This consideration is especially important in situations where trust has been severely broken. Recognizing that nothing is guaranteed helps us approach decisions about second chances with greater caution and realism. It involves assessing not just the promises of change, but also the risks involved and whether we are prepared to accept them. This approach does not mean living in a constant state of skepticism or refusing to forgive, but rather approaching reconciliation with a clear understanding of the possible consequences. This perspective also emphasizes the importance of setting clear boundaries and conditions if we decide to grant a second chance. This includes communicating explicit expectations and establishing consequences if these expectations are not met. Such an approach not only protects the emotional well-being of the person offering the second chance, but also establishes a framework of accountability for the person receiving it. 11. Do not let your emotions hinder your reason. In an ideal world, emotions and reason would coexist harmoniously, guiding our decisions to balanced and fair outcomes. However, in reality, emotions can sometimes cloud our rational judgment, especially when considering giving second chances to those who may not deserve them. The heart tends to remember the good times, hope persists in change, and the desire to believe in the best of people can lead us to overlook hard-earned lessons from the past. Allowing emotions to completely dominate reason in these situations is risky. It can cause us to repeat the same mistakes, expecting different results. Stoic philosophy, with its emphasis on self-mastery and a clear perception of reality, teaches us the importance of balancing emotion and reason. It encourages us to acknowledge our emotions, but not to let them dictate our actions without careful consideration of the consequences. When deciding whether to give a second chance, it is crucial to pause and objectively assess the situation. This involves looking beyond our feelings about someone and considering their track record, the likelihood of genuine change and the potential impact of their actions on our lives. Assess whether the person has demonstrated a true commitment to change and if you are prepared to face the same issues again. This approach helps guide a more rational decision. Establishing healthy and clear boundaries is also a way to protect yourself. This does not mean closing the door to forgiveness or the possibility of reconciliation, but ensuring that such openings do not compromise your emotional or physical well-being in this context, deciding not to give a second chance is an act of self-care, not bitterness. 12. You have a role in your own life. This principle emphasizes understanding that while we cannot control the actions of others, we have complete control over how we choose to respond. This includes the decision to grant or deny second chances. Deciding not to give a second chance is not merely a passive reaction to someone's behavior. It is an active choice that reflects our values, boundaries, and self-respect. By embracing our active role, we recognize that our peace of mind and well-being are our responsibility. Allowing someone who has repeatedly harmed us back into our life can be seen as neglecting the care we owe to ourselves. Stoic wisdom teaches us that serenity comes not from external approval or circumstances, but from internal mastery and living according to ethical principles. Taking an active role in our lives means making deliberate choices about whom we associate with and how these associations affect our personal journey. Choosing to distance ourselves from those who do not deserve a second chance is also about choosing the quality of influences we allow into our personal sphere. Finally, this principle encourages us to reflect on our personal growth and how adversities and difficult relationships have shaped us. 
Instead of remaining victims of circumstances or the actions of others, we are invited to learn from these experiences, strengthen our character, and make decisions aligned with who we aspire to be. Thank you for joining us today at True Stoic. Remember the journey to self-improvement is continual, and each step you take builds a stronger, more resilient you. Don't forget to check out one of our suggested videos on the screen to continue your journey toward living a profound and meaningful life. Until next time, stay stoic and thrive.